Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the concept of synchronization. So in synchronization, we are having three different things as you can say. Okay. So the first method is nothing but locking guys. I'll be discussing only one method here because the rest of two methods are not at all clear with them guys. So I don't want to confuse you. So you can just go through the PPT or from your book or from your textbook guys. Okay. Yes. So let us continue. So the first method is nothing but locking guys. So basically locking, I hope everyone knows the concept of locking, right? So to access something which is really important that no other should be there like any kind of data it might be data that you update it should not affect some others right yes so there could be some data which should be always be accessed by a single person the concept is nothing but mutual exclusion also you can say yes yes we discussed about these topics multiple times right yes okay so when a process is in so we are having two issues with this guys so even with this locking also we are having two issues so when a process invokes a remote object so assume that you are invoking a remote object, but you don't know the exact address, right? So you told to in invocate an object, but you don't know which object you are invocating. Are there any names? Are there any numbers? Are there anything related to them? We don't know anything like that. Yes. Yes. It has no knowledge of whether that invocation will lead to invocating other objects. If an object is protected against a concurrent access, we may have cascading set of locks that the invocating process is unaware as a sketch. Okay, so basically if you take an example, so assume that your process is requesting for this object, but this object is having some issue or it is busy with some other work, in that situation it can put, it can invocate some other object guys and that object can in, the, in turn invocate some other object and you will be getting the reply in the same flow. But the user never knows these kind of things, he will be assuming that he is getting the re reply, that's it. So that is an issue here. Okay. Similarly, when it comes to data resources guys, so when we are storing data resources, so data resources are nothing but files in databases so again they are also will be using the concept of locks and unlock guys okay so even in that situation there could be some other issues right so some kind of a consequences okay so okay so it, the diagram will be in this way guys if you draw a diagram so a process could request for objects and each and every object is having uh, its own data right yes so it will be invocating them and it will be doing a lock and unlock so here we represented the lock with a strong arrow and uh, unlock with the dotted arrow right so you can get some basic idea on that okay so i hope everyone got some basic idea so the second and third are nothing but the second is a maintaining a locks and the third is a blocking in a remote objects guys guys i tried to understand this but I, it's not that much clear guys so i recommend you to read it once and so that whatever you understand you can write in your examination okay yes so i hope everyone got some basic idea sorry for not explaining guys okay so in the next lecture we'll be discussing about the consistency and replication guys okay so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching